The Mustard Seed Media video podcast is sponsored and created by Mustard Seed Media Inc., creating and developing media and web for tomorrow's Christian ministries. On the web at mustardseedmedia.com. Okay, so let's open up Drupal.org and let's do a little CMS magic. Okay, so let's start with this Photoshop document here and let's turn this thing into a website right down to it and edit some CSS, shall we? Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media video podcast. My name is Bob and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. As Drupal web designers, we like to make our sites very easy for our users to use. Is that not true? We like it when they're on the site and they're looking at a piece of content. They know what that content is. They know where it resides in the site and it all makes mental sense to them how our site is organized. Therefore, we like URLs to make sense to the user. So for example, if we have a page about our organization, it might reside at ourorganization.com slash about, right? That makes sense. But what if we have a page that lists our organization's staff members? Uh, a lot of organizations that I see or a lot of websites that I see start to have a problem at this point because they might put that at slash staff. The problem with that is you start to get a very flat uh, user experience. You start to get a very flat uh, URL system that doesn't really make a lot of sense to the user. Instead, that page or that listing should probably reside under slash about slash staff because the staff is sort of about uh, part of about of our organization. Therefore, we have this issue where we want URLs to make sense to our users, but let's say we're adding 5, 10, 20, 30 articles to our site a day. And we want that to make sense to our user. So every time we add an article, it resides at the right place in the site hierarchy, and the URL gives a description to the user of where they're at. So maybe we create a news item and we want it to reside at slash news, slash date of the news item, slash news item title. Um, so things like that start to get a little bit difficult when you're starting to add a lot of content to your site and you don't want users to get confused. That's when Drupal's Path Auto Module comes in. What this does is allows us to set up patterns on our Drupal website uh, that automatically implement when we add a new piece of content for our URLs. So uh, it automatically looks at attributes of our content and creates a URL from that. That's a really good thing, makes it really usable, uh, makes a lot of sense to the user about where they're at on the site, things like that. So I'm going to show you how to use Path Auto Module today and I'm going to talk through a little philosophy while I do it. It's an easy module to use, uh, that's not really the point of this. Instead, I'm going to talk through some things to think about when you're doing this. So let's dive right into Path Auto Module. Uh, the first thing uh, to know is that Path Auto Module requires a couple other modules. It requires the Path Module in Drupal Core, which is what allows you to create clean URLs or to rewrite Drupal paths to begin with. And it also requires the Token Module because that module allows us to set up patterns. Uh, so we need to install anything that is required. Um, but before we do that, let me give you an example of uh, what we might be doing here. I've got a few different content types here. And let's uh, create a test news item. This is just a piece of news on our site. And uh, let's put in that news item. And let's save it. What you're going to notice is the Drupal path for this news item is slash node slash seven. That tells our users absolutely nothing. It doesn't tell them uh, whether they're looking at a news item. It doesn't tell them where they are on the site. It doesn't give them any hint of what's going on when they're looking at that, this piece of content. So let's go back. What we could do is because we, because we have the Drupal path module installed, we could go under URL path settings and call this news item. Now if we save it, we'll see that we've changed this to the news item and that's just fine <clears throat> as long as we're only going to have one news item on our site. Instead, what we really probably want this to look like is something more like slash news slash the title of the news item. Now this makes a little bit more sense to our users because they go, oh, I'm in the news section and this is the title of the article. I understand what's happening now. Problem is if you're adding a lot of content or you, uh, uh, this gets to be a pain to do, uh, you may start to forget some things. You might call it you know, slash news item, slash test new title, um, you know, wh whatever. Um, y y you start to run into these problems where you want it, Drupal to just automatically alias this stuff instead of having to do it every, every time. That's where the path auto module comes in. So let's go ahead and enable that module. And when we enable this, we're going to go and we're going to look at our settings. 
and uh, the settings have moved in Drupal 6. It used to be that it was in its own section. Instead, now it's under site building, URL aliases, and now we go to automated, automated alias settings. I'm going to go over some of these settings real quick, but I'm going to focus on the node path settings because that makes uh, that, that's sort of a clear example of what we're talking about. So you can go over general settings. This uh, tells you when it creates the URL, some things it does. What does it use as a separator when there's a space? Uh, you know, how, what's the maximum alias length, all that stuff. Uh, we can uh, decide which punctuation gets removed from URLs, which doesn't. Uh, we can set up our blogs to be in a certain place. Uh, so we can say all user blogs are maybe at user blogs slash username, and I'll go into these in just a minute. Uh, we can do the same thing with users, same thing with taxonomy terms. Uh, but let's focus on node path settings because this is going to make uh, probably the most sense as we look at our content that we create. What you'll see is each one of these sections has default path pattern. This means if we don't set a path pattern for that particular content type, it's going to use this which means that uh, this is a really bad thing. I always delete this right away uh, because what this means is that any content we create is going to be at this sort of same level as anything else. So if I create a news item, if I create a podcast, if I create whatever, it's now going to be at slash content slash title of that item, uh, which isn't really any better than slash node slash seven. So the first thing I do personally is just delete this. And so now what we want to do is we want to make sure we set up a URL pattern for uh, all of our different types of content. So let's do this for articles. <clears throat> well, let's, do, let's say for news, what we wanted to do before is we wanted it to be news slash title, right? And what we see is title raw. Uh, what will happen is if you, uh, if you use just the regular title uh, token, uh, Drupal will tell you to use the raw token if it's available. But what we have here, what this is, is this is token module doing its thing. What it does is it considers title dash raw, and it looks for the title of that item and just uses it in there. If you click replacement patterns like I did, you can see all of your options for anything you can use to create your URL aliases, anything from taxonomy terms to creation date to any of that stuff. So this is basically what we did with news before. Now if I create a news item, this is going to make sense to people because they're going to know they're in the news section, and here's the title of the news item. Let's do this for articles. I could make it, just like my news item, article slash title raw. Except my articles also use taxonomy. I sort my articles by type of article. So what I actually want to do is I want that article type in there. So if I scroll down, I can see that I have terms. These are uh, taxonomy terms. So I can put in my term that I'm using on that item. So what it's the URL for any articles are now going to be articles slash the name of the term it's associated with slash its title. That's a pretty good thing because that tells the user exactly where they are on the site, that they're looking at articles, what type of article they're looking at, and what the name is. Let's go ahead and save this and create an article to show what's going on. So if we create a new article, and let's say it's a spirituality article. Oops. Let's grab some lorem ipsum. Now when we create this URL, uh, you're gonna, first thing you're going to notice is that automatic alias is checked. This means let path auto do its thing. You want to leave that checked. And now let's save it. And now what we're going to see is we've now set up our article to automatically alias, uh, the URL to automatically be articles slash spirituality slash the name of the article. That's path auto doing its thing. This automatically is going to give some great organization to your site. So you really want to think through these different uh, path auto uh, settings. You want to think, how does my site architecture, how can that be reflected in my URLs? Uh, and you can use path auto to do that. Hopefully this is helpful. Don't forget to check out my other podcasts over at geeksandgod.com. And until next week, enjoy path auto.